Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the two years after the implementation of President Trump and Republicans' Tax Cut and Jobs Act, we saw unprecedented growth in our economy, and American families were able to exhale. Uh, we saw higher wages in the first two years after the law was passed. Workers' wages grew 4.9 percent faster than inflation. Lower wage workers saw 50 percent higher wage growth than those with higher incomes. Income inequality decreased, and the poverty rate reached its lowest point in half a century. Tax cuts across the board. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office found that the 2017 law reduced federal tax rates for families at every income level while actually increasing the share of taxes paid by the top 1 percent of American households. We also saw bigger deductions. The 2017 law doubled the guaranteed deduction, also known as a standard deduction, providing tax cuts and easier tax filing. And today, 9 out of 10 households claim the guaranteed deduction, which reduces their tax bill and eliminates the headache of tracking receipts and itemizing, very beneficial to middle class families that I represent. That all changed when Democrats took control of the federal government in 2021. Of course, COVID played a role, but look at what is happening now. Families are struggling. Why? Because the Democrats took control of the federal government. They continue uh, their inflationary policies, the Green New Deal tax credits, billions of dollars to corporations. In fact, the so-called Inflation Reduction Act included a $50 billion tax hike to Main Street while shelling out over $650 billion in special interest tax breaks for big banks and other corporations. And the JCT did an analysis that shows it was the corporations with annual gross receipts over $1 billion that are receiving over 90 percent of the green electricity investment and production tax credits. So when the other side says that it's the Republicans that are always looking out for the uh, wealthy corporations, I think this uh, analysis um, speaks otherwise. Well, I want to go back to the standard deduction because I actually um, introduced the Working Families Tax Cut Act, which would provide a $4,000 guaranteed deduction bonus for the next two years. Um, the current level for joint filers is 27,700 because of current levels of inflation. Let's say the inflation adjustment for 2024 tax year is 1,300 for a total of 29,000. Should this become law, the $4,000 would be added on top of that for a uh, deduction of 30, 33,000 in 2024. A bigger tax deduction will reduce the federal tax bill for roughly 107 million Americans, including. 350,000 families in my district, and it would allow them to keep more of their hard-earned money. Many middle-income households will see up to 775 more in their pocket per year, providing relief from President Biden's cost-of-living crisis. What would my legislation of a guaranteed deduction bonus mean for American families in this economy? Start with Mr. Norquist. Well, it'd be a help. It would reduce the cost of uh, government to people, and that makes it a little easier to get through life. Okay. Alan Aubach, would you like to add? I, I think uh, in addition to the uh, income that it would provide to much-needed income and it would provide to families, I would add it would also represent uh, a, a major simplification of the tax system because one of the things that TCJA did by increasing the standard deduction and by capping itemized deduction was by making make it uh, desirable for most people to file to claim the standard deduction which is a great simplification um, and increasing the standard deduction further would would further that process and and that is a major benefit of simplification yeah middle class families in my district were getting crushed by the alternative minimum tax can you guys speak to that about how the elimination of that has provided relief yes mr norquist Getting rid of the alternative minimum tax for people, remember, that, that was a tax put in by the hate and envy crowd that argued there were 155 people who weren't paying any income taxes, largely because they were invested in municipal bonds. Now, why one wants to subsidize loaning money to governments as opposed to productive factories um, is beyond me, but that was a decision by the government. So if you loan money to a city um, or a state that you wouldn't have to pay taxes on it, and some rich people did that, so 155 people were paying no income tax because they were investing in lower returns. They decided to punish that, to come up with the alternative minimum tax, and they ended up hitting as many as 30 million people, or were about to, before the Republicans took that out. So it was one of those situations where 
in trying to hit a few rich people, so you go, ah, ha, ha, we're mean to rich people, look at us, they ended up hitting millions of middle-income families, and undoing that damage was extremely helpful and a true blow to the hate and envy crowd. Right now. Thank you, I've run out of time.